guys, it's Brooke here from The Vintage Garter. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so I'm back in the kitchen and I'm going to be doing a cooking recipe. Um, I got, this recipe is for scotch eggs. I got it from the book Homemade Christmas uh, by uh, Yvette Van Boven. I got this book from Longwood Garden in their gift shop because, no, I like me some Longwood Garden. So anyway, um, it's like all these great homemade meals that you can do for Christmas. I know I mentioned in the video where I was redoing Peony Place that I would like to have Christmas at my place. And so I'm going to be testing out some recipes that I could potentially do. Uh, so I've seen scotch eggs on a number of um, like British YouTube channels. I watch a lot of Chateau DIY and it seems like this is kind of a popular breakfast food. Uh, so let me flip the camera around and show you the recipe. Okay guys, so this is what a scotch egg looks like. Basically it's a soft boiled egg and it's got, it's like wrapped in sausage and this one has a cornflake, cornflake crust and you deep fry it. And I did buy myself a deep fryer. And so you need six eggs, um, two small handfuls of all purpose flour, uh, you're going to need cornflakes, finely ground, and I have a box. Then you're going to need a pound of um, sausages and vegetable oil and sea salt and ground pepper and mustard. So uh, to start off, you got to put four eggs in a saucepan, add water till the well, well submerged and bring to a boil cover and um, let stand for four minutes because you want them to be soft boiled. And then I'm going to rinse them and take the shells off. And then I'm going to put the flour in bowl, in one bowl with the remaining two eggs and, and put the cornflakes. Okay. That's, so that's when you're actually breading it. Uh, but so I'm going to do the sausages. Uh, I'm going to divide it into four, four sections and then press the meat into a thin patty and then wrap around one of the soft boiled eggs. And then let's see, you dip it. So hold on a second now. So you now roll it in flour, remove excess, dip it in the beaten egg, and then roll in the cornflakes. Oh, okay. And then I let it firm up in the refrigerator for an hour. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna go do. So let me grab uh, the the eggs and get get everything set up. Oh, hey guys, I didn't realize that was on uh, not on time lapse just now, uh, but I'm just waiting for this to boil. It's almost there um, and I'm going to take a little break. I've kind of already prepped everything and um, I'll come back when I'm ready to actually start making, start assembling everything. So see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, so the eggs are all peeled, that sort of thing. So now what I was going to do. And so, uh, I have to make a really thin patty and wrap it. Okay. So, um, probably could see me in another video, but I'm going to flour my hand so it doesn't stick because I think this patty actually needs to be a lot thinner than what it is. And that's fine. Ugh. And I'm going to carefully 
Oh, wait a minute. What? Where's my... Ugh, guys. Where's my... Uh... Blast. I need a plate. Hang on, guys. Let me get my plate. Okay, so there's my plate. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Okay, this one is a little... Oh, I guess this needs to be a little thinner. Okay, hang on, guys. It's my first time doing a scotch egg, so... So, ooh, hang on, it's sticking to my hands. Okay, so one down, a couple more to go. I'm just gonna put that there. Hopefully, this can you see that on camera? Yeah, you can see that on camera. Okay, guys, so let me uh, see if I can stop the camera. Ooh, <laughs> look at my hands. <laughs> so anyway, um, hang on. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap these with plastic and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator because it needs to set for at least an hour and they made it clear in the directions that you can let it sit for overnight. So, uh, And then I'm going to clean up the kitchen because I've made a mess. What happens when you're cooking so anyway uh they i'm obviously the fresher the eggs the better this is going to taste i don't have chickens but you know for those of you guys who do have chickens this seems like it would be kind of be a cool thing to do with the eggs that you have and so anyway oops you guys can see that if you take a picture off. and uh yeah so I will see you guys in several hours. Okay guys, so I got the deep fryer all set up. Uh, oh shoot. Um, I'm, it's supposed to go to 350, which it's almost there. Um, but I've got the basket. So basically I followed the directions, like this is the max food line, which is under. And I've got it at the max oil level. So, yeah. So the instructions in the manual, uh, you set the temperature and then, let's see. And the indicator line will come on and basically you go over very slowly and then press the start stop button. So, uh, and then you put the, the lid on. So once it's done, it'll emit three beeps and lift the basket and check the food has been cooked to the required color and unplug the outlet from the outlet. So um, I just got a little bit longer to go. So that's what it's doing. So I'm just gonna wait, got a few more minutes. I think I did it to, it's supposed to be 350, but this one didn't have 350 because it goes up in like nine degree intervals so I chose the next one which was I think 347 so uh, I'm going to do it for six minutes so that should do it so anyway I'll be adjusting it as we go but this is my first time using it um, so guys just 
importantly, don't remember, don't go past the maximum uh, lines on the basket or the unit. So when I was telling my mom, she was like terrified because all she could think of like was the turkey fryer disasters, which is caused by, because number one, I think a lot of people, number one, put too much oil in it. And then on top of that, they're putting frozen turkeys in, which they have to be thawed. Um, I don't have any, mine isn't frozen. There is a recipe on how to do like things like French fries and whatnot um, that are frozen. You know, obviously you got to follow the directions um, and you have to be careful when you put it down. But um, yeah, so I'm just, we're almost there. I'm at 3.15. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, safety first. I do have, <laughs> I do have a um, fire extinguisher uh, right there to the side of my, uh, of my counter. So um, if this goes south, you know, I'm, I'm totally prepared. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I keep just like pe peeking in. Um, so apparently this is going to make a lot of steam, which is fine. Um, but there's going to be cover on it. So they just said when it's over, just lift the lid slowly. Uh, so once it, yeah. And if I was going to do this twice, at the end of the first part of the basket, wait for the lights to go out. Oh my God. I'm not doing that. So we shall see. So I will just be very, very, very careful. So actually let me turn the camera around because we're coming up on that time pretty fast. Okay, 339. The temperature, target temperature is 347. Okay, let's go, 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 go. I'll just have to edit all of this out. <laughs> all the waiting. Okay, should be getting. Okay, we're gonna do this very slowly. There we go. Okay guys, that's what it's looking like right now. Okay. Oh, just in case you guys are wondering, so in terms of how much oil to get to the maximum level, so I had one gallon of vegetable oil. And I ran out and I went and got some more vegetable oil by Wesson. Uh, and so that's how much I used down to there. So you do need, if you can get like two gallons, that's what you should get because one gallon is definitely not enough. So we got three minutes and I'm counting, so. Okay guys, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so this is a look. Alright guys, here we go. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's just prep the color and unplug from the outlet. Okay, so let me go ahead and unplug it from the outlet. Okay. Ooh, that looks nice. In golden brown. Uh, so I'm just going to let it drain here for a little bit. Okay. really good I'm quite proud of myself I know guys vegetable oil can be reused what I'll do is I uh, once it's completely cooled I'll get a funnel and I'll put like some paper towel and uh, in it and I'll use the paper towel to kind of drain it uh, but the nice thing about this is that it's got this great little spigot right there to open it but obviously I'm not gonna do that right now uh, so anyway, let me get a plate and cut this open and see how it looks on the inside. Hopefully I did this right. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh, it's not all the way cooked through. 
Uh, and I just looked. I actually had this on higher than the recommended temperature. So I'm going to throw these bad boys in the microwave. Um, that's really weird. Uh, I was not expecting that to happen. So uh, in case you guys were wondering, this is the first time I've made this recipe. So uh, let me just throw this in the microwave. Um, I mean, the egg is nicely soft boiled, but the outside of the sausage is done. The inside is not. So uh, I guess the next time I will have to adjust it. You know, guys, I just remembered the recipe is not actually made for a deep fryer. Let's see how it tastes. So let me grab a fork because that's really at the end of the day what we want to say. And I know some of you guys are probably wondering, dude, you did a cooking video first time out like that's the whole fun of cooking really mmm <laughs> very tasty okay guys so I finished eating the scotch egg I had some mustard I did some honey mustard it was pretty good uh, so while I was eating, I was actually doing some research and looking at other recipes for the scotch egg. And so I think the recipe that I used um, probably was not correct, which does happen with recipes. Sometimes the recipes, for whatever reason, certain thing, aspects of them can be wrong. Um, you know, number one, this... I used less meat than what was called for. She called for a pound and five ounces. I only used a pound. Uh, so obviously the less amount of meat you use have around the egg, uh, the more thorough it should cook, more thoroughly it should cook in a shorter time. Um, also, I did it slightly higher at a higher temperature, which I had a higher temperature plus it wasn't as thick. So I would have thought that it would have been cooked all the way through. Um, from what I could see from other recipes, number one, I think the most I ever saw was like a pound of a pound of sausage. Uh, there was one recipe I saw where they actually only used seven ounces, so much thinner. Uh, the one, the, but the thing that I noticed with all the recipes is that they either cooked it at three fifty or they cooked it at like three seventy five, but they actually cooked it for a longer time than what what I did. So. Basically, I use less meat, a higher temperature, and rather than five to six minutes, like she put five to six minutes, I cooked it at six minutes. So uh, given the fact that mine was thinner plus higher temperature and a longer cook time, I can't even imagine how that would have turned out if I had used more meat plus a lower cook time uh i mean a lower temperature plus a, a, a uh you know a, a so a less cook time uh it definitely would have been not done the other thing that i noticed i did look at the manual and they had some suggested times like for various types of things you were doing and they recommended that, like for example with a, a meatball which obviously meatballs not quite you know isn't as big as what I had. They recommended a lower temperature of 329, but they recommended eight to 10 minutes, which I, I guess I could see how that would work because obviously the longer, you know, because if I had left it in that vat of oil, even at the temperature that I had it, it would have cooked through. But the thing is the higher temperature is gonna brown faster. So I'm thinking that if I had done it at like 329, but I had done it for like 10 minutes, um, it may have cooked all the way through and then I wouldn't have to worry about the outside of it browning as quickly. So I'm going to remake it again and I'm going to try, I'm going to try that and see if that, if that works. And if that works, then that'll be great. And I'll come back and share, um, and share my results, uh, for my research. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was kind of fun. I love trying new recipes. I like trying new stuff and, um, you know, it's, it's always, <laughs> um, I've done recipe testing for a cooking magazine before. And so, uh, I know that sometimes the instructions they give 
you know, sometimes I can look at them and be like, yeah, this is not going to work at all. <laughs> this is, this is wrong, but sometimes you can't always tell. And so this is one of these things where I was just like, eh, didn't know until you knew. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.